let's next hear to a dialogue discussion with architect Prashant Sotaria in conversation with architect Geeta Balakrishnan. On behalf of IIA Rajasthan, I invite architect Prashant Sotaria on the stage. Architect Prashant Sutaria is the principal architect PSA Mumbai and co-founder of the Center of Living and Planning for Tomorrow. Over the last three decades, he nationwide practices has won more than 15 international and 13 national awards and mentions. He is passionately engaged in the betterment of architecture. As a profession, he believes that architects can contribute towards betterment of humanity through well-designed built environment. So I would like you to join uh, hands and welcome Mr. Architect Prashant Sotaria. So good afternoon everybody and such a pleasure to be here on this platform of IIA Rajasthan chapter and the pleasure is of course more because all our friends are here and today we are going to talk some interesting things with Geeta who is already here. So before I start uh, anything let me formally introduce uh, Geeta. So Geeta Balakrishnan is a graduate from School of Planning and Architecture New Delhi. She completed her practical training at the Center for Building Performance and Diagnostics at Carnegie Mellon University, Pittsburgh, USA. In 2002, she founded Ethos, an initiative to bridge the gap between students and professionals from the architecture, construction, engineering, and design fraternity. Ethos will be completing 20 remarkable years in June 2022. Mark this milestone, coinciding with 75 years of independent India, she embarked upon a 1,700-kilometer-long walking journey from Calcutta to New Delhi to spread awareness on how good design can play a great role in changing lives. Ethos Foundation, in collaboration with the Council of Architecture and the Indian Institute of Architects, conceptualized the Walk for Our Cause campaign, an initiative to take stories of different architects and designers which have made through their sustainable intervention in different spheres of life to the masses. Completing, this is very interesting, completing a total of 350 hours of walking through seven states, crossing 849 cities, towns, villages. Geeta crossed into Delhi via Badrapur border on Saturday 23rd and on May 21st, she is going to cross over to the stage. So may I invite Geeta onto the stage? And I think from our fraternity, she, she deserves a big applause. And if, I mean, what more can I say for her fabulous and courageous journey? I mean, I've been privileged to meet Geeta uh, at Rachi on her way on her way uh, from Calcutta to Delhi and that's the first time in fact I met on personal level otherwise we have been sharing stage at some of the events but uh, it was really a pleasure to know how you know courageous she is going through and the kind of route that she took I mean I was telling her that of course her hometown is Calcutta so naturally she chose, chose Calcutta to Delhi but I was just telling her that, you know, it would have been much easier on her path to take the journey from a city like Mumbai to Delhi, which is a more developed part of the country, you know. So it's really, really courageous of her to take on that journey. I also shared with her one very interesting uh, thing which I came across uh, whilst I was talking with Christopher Benninger. And uh, I, she was aware of it, of course, but I would like to share with you that when he was about... Uh, uh, 20 or so odd years old, he walked, fr uh, he took a lift from London to Mumbai. He hitchhiked. Yeah. So, yeah. So that is something which I admire him. Every time I meet him, I tell him that, you know, I just, Christopher, I just love you for this, you know, like your architecture is great, but this is, this is far more impressive for me, you know, as a human being, I'm saying, you know, as an architect, of course, we are all admire his lovely work and his contribution to the education and other aspects of our profession. So, and then, of course, the discussion happened with Gita that, you know, how she thought of this walk and what inspired her. And, of course, you know, what was that exact moment when she made up her mind that, no, ye walk up mujhe karna hai. 
and what was the reaction of your family. So a little bit of that and then we'll keep the journey going. So. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, I Rajasthan chapter for inviting us to this Rajasthan Architecture Festival. They already have welcomed me and uh, been very warmly uh, appreciative of uh, what I did at Bharatpur. Mukulji was there, uh, Gaurav was there and uh, Anu and a whole lot of others also uh, made my uh, walk into Rajasthan very uh, uh, pleasant and pleasurable. So on why uh, and uh, how my family, when I committed and how my family reacted to it, uh, well, this story actually goes back four years from 2017 is when I have been mulling on wanting to do this work. I read an article in the newspapers about uh, Priya Dutt walking with uh, Sunil Dutt. In two th uh, and that was in 1987 they walked, but this article was in uh, 2017 that I read and since then, uh, I've been talking to family and friends and architects and uh, my colleagues at work as well to understand what format this walk could take, what is the uh, uh, kind of shape it could take. And uh, uh, initially I thought I could walk the different climatic zones as separate uh, 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 initiatives along with colleges and students and you know, map that area, map the architecture of that area and so on. But uh, at some point, I took to running in 2014, incidentally, at the age of 45. And uh, I completed three full marathons as well. So when I was doing those full marathons and training for it, I realized that this kind of a walk needs to be a, a personal journey and a, uh, a solitary kind of a uh, venture because uh, I could need to be responsible for myself. I didn't know if I could take on the responsibility of many others, at least in the first uh, attempt. So that's how uh, I decided that it has to be a walk on my own. And uh, also we were seeing a lot of images of uh, uh, the migrant workers at that point, just around that time they were walking back and that kind of triggered something within me. And I said I have to commit. And uh, while they were walking for survival, I was making this whole, it was kind of ironical also that I was making this whole story around my walk and you know planning something so elaborately. But I think the objective of and the intent of that walk was also to um, give meaning to uh, uh, their, their troubles and difficulties as well. And that's how this whole thing came about. So in July last year is when I um, committed. I woke up one morning and I told my husband and my mother, my kids are uh, away. So I told them both that uh, I am doing this walk. And I remember my husband knew that I had this uh, intention. So it would keep coming up from time to time, so he was okay with it. Uh, my mother thought I was joking initially. She's 84 years old. Incidentally, she walked the last three kilometers with me as well in Delhi. So she uh, laughed and she said, okay, I'll jog with you. She thought I was pulling one of those fast ones. And then uh, when she saw my face and she realized that I am serious, then she kind of quietly supported me since then. Even when I, I had a fall in the journey as well, I don't know if... Some of you who are following me would know I, I fell in uh, Gwalior and injured my left foot. It was pretty bad and we, I was even wondering whether I would be able to walk further after that for a little while. But even then I think the family just quietly, uh, uh, they did not even question one saying, are you going ahead with it? Are you, you know, they were not with me, they didn't know how bad it was. Uh, they just allowed me to take my decision. So they've been extremely supportive. And uh, I think uh, uh, on your question, I, I think the intent is also not everybody gets that kind of uh, uh, support. But I think it's also the kind of person I have been from the day I got married. I don't think they had, or even with my parents, I don't think they had a choice. They, uh, it was support that I sought and not permission. And uh, I got that. And that's from day one. And I think you need to, and I'm saying this to, uh, I don't see too many youngsters here, but when I talk in colleges, I tell the youngsters also, I think that equation needs to be set right in the beginning for that kind of uh, support to happen in a, in a relationship. So I hope that answers your yeah, question. Yeah, of course. And I think your family requires a round of applause from all of us. Because without their support, this kind of things become Absolutely. difficult, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, so both my boys also, they, 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 when I told them on, on a Zoom call and my daughter-in-law, they said that uh, they're in for a roller coaster ride, but they just laughed and went along with me. I mean, they knew it was a crazy and a wild idea, but uh, they were with me all the way. Yeah. 
I think uh, in life, don't we all of us remember things which you have done, craziest things. And I'm sure this is going to be one of a very, very major thing for you, you know, to remember and cherish all through. But thanks for sharing that lovely uh, little background about your uh, walk and how it started. Now, let's look at your journey. So, can you tell us a little about your journey? How does it feel to finish this uh, kind of, you know, like a, a big task that you had taken and successfully completed? And of course, as you know, I realize in between the temperatures were very high. So, I mean, how do you feel it at the end of it, you know? So, while you use the word finish, uh, uh, it still, for me, is like kind of a beginning. It was a huge task, no doubt. And when, when I was on the journey, it was one day at a time, really, and I didn't realize the magnitude of what I had achieved. And, you know, uh, when I wrote to friends in the beginning that I'm doing this, a lot of them wrote back saying, you're one hell of a crazy woman, are you sure, and things like that. But when I completed it, I also, uh, you know, got messages from people saying, you actually did it, you know. It's only then that I realized that it was, it's really something uh, absolutely huge. Um, you see some numbers there. Uh, it was about 2,550,000 steps in a sense. But it's actually one step towards the rest of my life is how I see it. And I think there's so much more that uh, 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 I have in store for myself. And uh, I did walk through uh, all kinds of uh, 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 terrain, like you were saying. Uh, it wasn't, uh, uh, yeah. So that was day one. I'm uh, uh, setting out from uh, uh, Howrah Bridge. That's my husband who walked with me for two days, and then the one in the gray and orange. And he came back and walked 400 kilometers with me in uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh as well. A few friends walked till the end of Howrah Bridge, and then I was largely on my own. Uh, for the next so many days. Um, so yes, I walked through uh, all kinds of uh, terrain. I walked at night to experience the city, to experience uh, uh, how secure one feels, how safe one feels. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, the beauty of uh, seeing the sunrise every day is something that really got to me. And you know, I remembered, uh, I watched Forrest Gump once again on the trip. And uh, I remember his, uh, him saying uh, how uh, you, you kind of forget where, uh, uh, or you, you, you don't know where the uh, heaven ends and earth begins when you see a sunrise. And that was something I kind of experienced every day. Uh, there were very, very uh, uh, grueling days as well. Uh, we've missed out one slide. OK, there's one slide uh, I think that's got missed out. But there were very grueling days as well, uh, where um, I walked through uh, the, the, the terrain of Singroli was something that, uh, uh, although uh, I remember Jitendra Mehta ji telling me, you know, that's not the rest of Madhya Pradesh, that's just Singroli. And he was, uh, and that's true, that was not the rest of Madhya Pradesh, but Singroli was something that uh, I, I, I think was the hardest four days of uh, the entire trip, and uh, I would say, uh, hardest four days of any physical uh, journey that I have uh, undergone. And uh, that's because Singroli is uh, ke khan hote hai pe. So it's full of, uh, uh, you know, uh, coal everywhere, whether it's the leaves, the, uh, uh, you know, homes, the ground. I was telling somebody this morning that when you put your foot on the ground, on the uh, uh, way, on the road that you're walking, it could go in one inch because there's fine coal dust there. And so you're inhaling all that as well. So I had to wear masks when I was walking or running, and that's not easy when you're uh, exercising for so long. And uh, uh, that if a vehicle went by, that soil kind of enveloped me in a cloud of uh, uh, dust as well. So very, very hard days. As far as the sun is concerned, I think uh, I did walk up to 43 degrees, and it turned out that April was the hottest in 122 years or something like that at the end of it. And it had to be the time that I chose to walk, you know. It's uh, something that uh, I, I, in fact, did a study and I said that by the time I reached Delhi, it would be 36, 38. Uh, one didn't expect that one would have to walk 43. So we had to slowly advance the time that I left. So instead of leaving at 6 in the morning, I was leaving at uh, 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 5.30, then 5, then finally it became 4. So we were actually waking up at 3, 3.15 and getting to the place where we wanted to start by 4.30 or so and head out. Um, also learned tips to keep 
keep the you know heat at bay. I started using ice inside my uh, head, head bandana and around my neck, and uh, uh, sabja seeds in the evening. So there were a lot of things that I added to my diet also to be able to uh, uh, kind of handle the heat. So yes, uh, that's that's, yeah. that's. So I think have you covered all your challenges? Because now I want to move on to some interactions and other things that you had. So any other challenge? Well, I could go on for okay. uh, days if I have yeah. to talk okay. about it, but okay. no, yeah. not really. Great. Uh, so, uh, how many steps did you walk, you said, total? Uh, I, I have to exactly calculate, but, but it's 2,550,000 steps. So, just to put it in our, our perspective, we all look at our, you know, apps in the phone. Ki aaj mein kitna chala, you know? And that is 10,000 steps, kar liya, to mera jas aadmi khush ho jate ki haan, mene kota kar liya, you know? I was so, doing 40 to 45,000, uh, yeah. yeah, so I was. Yeah, so you can imagine the pace at which she has walked and amount of walk that she has. And I think I'll take something like four or five years to complete what she has done, you know, in terms of number of steps. Huh? Okay. So, but interesting, I mean, the numbers are very interesting and really, they, they actually show us the kind of task that, you know, it was. But, okay, so the, uh, you know, like, this is, of course, the, you can say the numbers and other things, but the purpose, I think the purpose that she chose is what is, you know, appealing to us equally as designers, because we know our fraternity as a construction, as an industry, design as an industry is not really gone down right into the, you know, the lowest strata of the society. They all think it's an elitist, sub uh, elite look kaam hai, you know. So I think that was one of the purpose that you had. So can you just tell us about how you interacted with people? What were those interesting interaction? And I'm sure, you, I mean, I have traveled by car on some of the routes that she has taken and I always feel that if breakdown will happen, what will happen? You know, and there she was on the walking and I, I'm sure that you must be having some interesting conversations with a lot of people. So please share some of your thoughts. So the intent really, uh, when we started was, uh, uh, how design can touch lives. And I'm glad that some of the presentations that we saw just before uh, I spoke did address some of that. So the purpose was that, but I think it was a shifting or changing goalpost as well, because as I went and I would experience something, I would add that to my bag of uh, 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 learnings and uh, maybe even, even the intentions. So we also, uh, uh, let me just take you through some of the, so one is of course to experience the countryside, so there was, some beautiful uh, interactions I had, whether it was at Madhagram in uh, Madhapur in um, near Bishnupur in West Bengal with the Adivasis there, or the uh, Orang tribe uh, children in uh, Ranchi. These girls, incidentally, are uh, children of uh, brick kiln workers, and these brick kiln workers go off uh, for seven to eight months in a year to work in different parts of the country. And either these children go uh, brick kiln work workers' parents, rather children's parents, actually. And these kids either are left uh, uh, to hang around on the site and uh, 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 you know, just waste their uh, uh, childhood, or they are left back in the villages to be taken care of by some family member. So here, th this is an NGO called Asha, introduced to me by the IIA Jharkhand chapter chair, incidentally, Sandeep Jha. He was also present here. And uh, it was an amazing interaction. I'll show you a video a little later on uh, what I learned there. And of course, this young, this man who's playing the instrument was from Rajasthan, moved from Rajasthan to Orcha, and I met him at Gwalior. So he was leading a nomadic existence, a little bit like mine, so there was a uh, resonance of sorts there. Um, the kind of uh, uh, receptions and the kind of uh, colors and people and the food that we had in different places also was quite a discovery. I was a little careful about eating, though, because I had to survive 70 days. We are, we are used to a certain system and things like that. So I had to be careful that I wasn't messing with it too much. So that was uh, uh, the journey, but you had asked me about the intent, so I just want to come to the different things that we did. So we had, uh, I carried with me a few presentations. Uh, uh, one was called uh, Mera Ghar, which is what I spoke at when I met uh, uh, different uh, 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 groups of people. It could have been curated interactions where I met with, say, a Lions Club had organized, me to meet, uh, organized for me to meet with uh, 
uh, school teachers at Renukut, or it could have been the Madhavgram uh, villagers that I met, or it could have been a Chai Pe Charcha where I stopped at a tea stall. I put out these booklets that I was carrying and that brought in a lot of curiosity and people came to ask me what I was doing there and then we got talking. So, uh, so th that was one kind of interaction that we had. Then I carried a presentation called design, uh, uh, design as a Career and those I took to schools. So it could be in cities, uh, I had them in vernacular as well, in this case largely Hindi because this was the, ex other than West Bengal it was largely a Hindi belt that I was traveling. Um, and uh, uh, I um, did these presentations in schools as well and uh, it was interesting that along the way there were, uh, you know, government school kids uh, also kind of uh, following me and wanting to know what I was doing in their uh, place. These were some of the sites that I saw um, that I'd like to show you. And. Um, so uh, 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 when, I went, when, I, when I went and saw these little kids in uh, schools who were below class five, there were some of them uh, who, um, uh, you know, I asked them to draw their home. I said, imagine and draw your home. And I found them uh, kind of, the first, first place I went to in Jharkhand, I found them struggling a little bit and I also realized that it's not easy for them. And then I went back to my team and asked them to make a different kind of a presentation which I took from there on which uh, where we had them uh, talk about how a weaver bird, uh, the videos on how a weaver bird makes its nest or how a bee makes its hive, how a lion lives in its den. And then we had these kids, you know, with their mouth open, listening in and then being able to visualize what their home is and being able to draw it so much better because they started uh, 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 resonating with the question that I asked. Uh, I had People, so this was the tough day that I was talking about. I also had to climb a few places. Uh, I actually was a little greedy. I wanted to cut on two kilometers and I chose to uh, uh, do some trekking. It was actually madness. If I had injured myself, that would have been much earlier than Gwalior as well. So I wouldn't advise that. Uh, down there is uh, uh, Singroli that I was telling you about. Even the one up is uh, Singroli. So I had people walk with me the kind of activities, that's Panna, uh, uh, where this was a school, uh, school uh, in Panna, the girls walked, the children walked with me. That's up there is Madla, it's also a village uh, of Panna where the local village girls walked. And at the end of it, when I would ask them, do you know what design is, do you know what architecture is, and at the end of it, I would be happy to hear them kind of say, yes, uh, we know. And we had people from, uh, say, the NTPC, and that's, that entire gang that came with me is from IIH Jharkhand, actually. They were, they were able to actually keep pace pretty much the whole 30 kilometers with me that day. Uh, I think um, uh, in terms of intent, if I was to also talk about this, since uh, there are many of you here who actually practice, this was uh, a bit of a shocker to me when I was, I, I decided to get two construction workers to flag my uh, 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 walk off and I said that those will be the celebrities who are flagging me off and when I asked architects to help me because I'm not a practicing architect when I asked architects to help me get two construction workers I found that a bit of a struggle uh, I think we don't talk enough to our construction workers there are so many layers between us and the construction workers and I think that's something that hit me hard and uh, that's another message that I wanted to take around to our community that we need to break that because uh, if, especially if we want to go around uh, telling people that, um, telling people that there is someone called an architect, these guys are going to be, or these people are going to be our ambassadors. And we always say we are not known enough and I think that's something that was also the intent of the work. There were a lot of things like this that kind of kept accumulating along the way. Yeah. Sure. So just to uh, add uh, some information to what she said, I mean, I have been to Bishnupur, it's in West Bengal. I did some hotel at Durgapur, a five-star hotel for Fortune Group. And we sourced some material from local artists. Now, once we were supposed to travel from Bishnupur to Nakuda, which is a neighboring village. And they told me not to travel by road with, you know, like two cars, local people with me after three o'clock. That is the kind of level of security hazards that you have. And that's where you have walked. So, I honestly didn't, uh, I'm surprised. When was this? This was uh, last year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't face, actually that's something I have to proudly say about 
our country. I, I went in with a lot of apprehensions. Of course, I had, a, I had a car that followed me and I had a bike that followed me and they were, I mean, but none of them are bouncers or uh, yeah. people who could actually protect me in case there was uh, something. In fact, I also initially in Jharkhand, I had planned a very circuitous route because I wanted to, uh, I was worried about the Naxal area there. And uh, when I spoke to the locals and I spoke to a local cop as well, he said, no ma'am, that's all the past. Things have improved vastly and you will be completely safe. So I didn't feel even once unsafe from that perspective. When I talked about walking at night, I felt unsafe from the perspective of how we design our cities. So that's why I said, as designers, I think we need to look at what we are doing. Are we, are we lighting it adequately? You start feeling uncomfortable when you go to certain parts of a, a road or a, a, a corner. So can we look at those things better? But in terms of actually, I walked through the, uh, the Chambal uh, uh, Ghati as it's called. And uh, not once did I feel worried that I'm going to be, I mean, of course, we also joked if someone's going to be carried away, who we will front from the group and so on. In Panna, when I was walking the forest area, I remember uh, uh, someone from who's, who's an avid wildlife enthusiast who I was interacting with told me, no, no, you don't have to worry. The maximum you'll encounter are sloth bears. And that I was worried about. Imagine, you know, coming and encountering a sloth bear. But um, I would wear a headlight when it was very early in the morning and the car lights would be there. So I didn't really, I'm happy and uh, proud to say that I didn't feel that kind of yeah, a That's fear really right. encouraging to hear that things are so good on ground. I mean, this is, I shared my experience, but you yeah. have the more recent and more authentic on ground feedback. So we are more comfortable with that. But I must say that is one of the poorest part of the country. And so we have got some amazing artists over there. And I don't know whether you got time to see any of those terracotta work or any, you interacted with those people and they have exhibited, I have interacted with them, they have exhibited in Russia, London, Paris, everywhere. So on route, uh, 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 there was only so much that I encountered but yes, I did go and speak to uh, say uh, in one village we had uh, um, uh, uh, you know, a murti uh, uh, maker who I went and spent time with. He was the only one in that village who's uh, uh, making uh, idols anymore. And uh, his father used to make and his son is not going to make murtis anymore. And that's a, again an appeal. I think I was very happy to see Siddharth's presentation where you're integrating uh, uh, um, art and craft into uh, quote unquote modern materials. So uh, I was happy to see that because they're getting equipped to deal with the change. And that's extremely important because, uh, uh, and I think if all of us can kind of pledge that in every project that we uh, uh, take on, we will include one uh, 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 art or one craft um, that is not necessarily, uh, that is dying, but not necessarily in its uh, pure original form. It could also be in its evolved form, so you're actually giving them a new livelihood or a new way of life as they go on. And I think that's extremely important as well. True. And, uh, you know, like your interaction with people. So, did you come across, uh, you know, these people from uh, smaller towns and villages, which are pretty re remote from our tier two cities also. So, are they aware of things? What, what was it that you saw them? How educated they are? How exposed they are? You know, in terms of... So, um, a common uh, refrain that I heard, I mean, one thing I'd like to say is, I would have asked the question every day of the 70 days, at least once, if not more often, Naksha kon banata hai? And I would never get the answer architect. So I think that's a wake up call for all of us. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, 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 you know, in these smaller cities, you may think it's not required for them to know you, but I think it is. Because I think it's time, if, and I think the change that's happening in these uh, tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. Uh, I, again, I think it was one of you in the earlier sessions who talked about uh, um, uh, Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities still using some craft. And bec so, uh, I think if we don't do something now, we are going to lose out even on that. And I think it's extremely important for us to wake up and make our presence felt in these places. 
How do we do that? I have a few ideas, but I don't think that will probably come into the scope of uh, this walk, talk, really. But yes, so they, uh, in terms of uh, who the architect is, I Raj Mistri, ka, Rani Mistri, ka, contractor, ka naam, engineer, ka naam milta tha, but hardly ever an architect. Vastu Kala, I am Vastu Kar, Vastu Kar, kya hai? So at least the people I met along the way, I have kind of told them who a Vastu Kar is and who an architect is. I have kind of actually uh, defiantly told them, nahi, engineer nahi banata hai, or, uh, you know, it is an architect. Uh, if you were to look at small towns and villages, this is a place called Chandwa, uh, uh, on the, uh, just a little after uh, uh, Jharkhand, the top left. And this was an uh, 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 NGO run by Father Alphonse, who was running a nurses training program. It was very interesting, I went there and, you know, they sang for me and then I talked to them, told them what I'm doing and so on. And then I asked them when they are graduating to become nurses. And they said probably in the next uh, month or so. So they are going to be posted in hospitals. My next question to them was, how many of you have seen a hospital? And there was only one girl of the whole lot who had actually seen a hospital. And she's going to be posted in a hospital which is so very removed. I mean, it's going to be such a culture shock for, for uh, the, the girl going there as well. I mean, leave alone. Uh, uh, figuring out this whole new uh, thing of nursing, it's going to be something else that she needs to deal with when she actually gets to that uh, hospital. So, in terms of awareness, yes and no. So, there would be, it's very interesting how it works there. I never, I, uh, those who are following me on uh, social media would have seen a lot of articles in the vernacular that were coming about also in Hindi and uh, uh, Bengali as well. And uh, it, it, interesting how I never solicited them. There would be suddenly someone who would overtake us, park his bike, come and say, Ke, aap kya kar rahe hai? Main patrka roo, main aap se baat karna chata hoon. Take out his uh, phone and say, I want to record you. And the first time it happened, I didn't understand what was happening. So they video record it and they have an app of sorts and a WhatsApp uh, mechanism by which this information is pumped through. Their, their local villages. And um, so I, I, my team would say, are you sure you want to give a, we don't even know him, no ID card. I said, I'm here to tell people what I'm here for. I don't care. I'm fine with giving them that interview. After giving them that interview, uh, I would go ahead about 500 meters or a kilometer ahead. I would have people coming up to me and saying, I have the news. Can I take a selfie with you? Can you tell me more about yourself? You know? So, uh, the point I'm trying to say is that they are fairly, there are various ways in which this awareness spreads. At the same time, the school kids, the little ones that I'm talking to, I also carried a, 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 a present, uh, we have a course called Universe of Architecture, which has been curated, we translated it to Hindi, for, uh, and kept it free of cost for anybody who wants to understand what Universe of Architecture is, particularly school kids, to decide if they want to take it as a career. And uh, I asked these little ones, okay, can I write, to you, write for you the link so you can register? They said uh, they don't even have a smartphone, so there is no way they can even... Uh, so there's these extremes really that uh, exist. Uh, before we move on, uh, there's this last slide uh, on the corner. I don't know how many of you know of the Lifeline Express. Uh, it was uh, inaugurated in 1991 by Impact. Uh, Impact Foundation is the one running it. And it's a train that goes across uh, uh, different villages in India, 12 months in the year, parks for four weeks in different locations. And actually, uh, it runs as an operation theater. So there are, uh, one week would be eye surgeries, one week would be ENT surgeries, one would be ears, uh, you know, uh, uh, dent dental surgeries and so on. And I think uh, and the doctors were the surgeons. The OPD is run by the government doctors. But the surgeons are people who are giving of their time. They give one week of their time, they go, they're taken care of. Hospitality and travel is probably taken care of. But they're giving one week of their time to be there. And I think we as a community of architects, if we can devise a way in which in our respective locations, we run some kind of design clinics. I found that, uh, 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 you know, these people can't, definitely can't afford uh, designers. And when it comes to designing with their native intelligence, their knowledge of materials with mud and uh, the old systems, they are the experts. We can only learn from them. But when they start using newer materials, I think they lose their way and it's nice for them to be guided. 
And uh, that's something I think is extremely important. If we can find, figure out a system, IIA, uh, through IIA, through the council, if we can all come together and figure out a network of sorts that we take to different places. And uh, I've also been asking the question in all these places to young architects. What will it take for you to go back and practice in some of your places? You know? There's, there is, uh, unfortunately, no, no work. And uh, 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 they talk about Farzi architects taking all the little work that's there and doing it at really low cost. And they are governed by the COA norms. So they have to charge a particular amount. So they, they, they really rank nowhere. So uh, I have, again, some ideas on how we can probably create a system with incentives for youngsters to go back and work. I mean, like you have government doctors. Can we have a system within the, like, and you have Anganwadi workers uh, who uh, can be, need not be architects. The Anganwadi worker, that on par can be maybe a local contractor who's equipped to answer certain questions. So you get a certain vocabulary for regions as well. And you'll see the uh, styles also changing. You have a, suddenly a, a, a kind of a mezzanine space appearing as you get into UP and then the mezzanine growing larger as you get into MP. Um, but I think uh, what I'd also like to bring about as far as materials goes, they look, um, uh, you know, although in form there is some, some difference, but when you see a mud home, you think a mud home is a mud home is a mud home. But I think I have, uh, when, when I start conversing with, with, when I started conversing with each of these people, I understand what they add, you know, in each place to their mud home. How we talked about cradle to uh, 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 grave and then cradle to cradle. How some of these homes are actually, you know, even the broomstick with pride was being shown as having been made completely at, uh, you know, on, on site. How the charpoy was completely woven, even the ropes for the charpoy were woven by the person who's living in it. And uh, the tiles uh, uh, were, each one was molded. So it's a complete labor of love. And I think when you talk about materials being tangible, the, the knowledge behind that, I think, is the intangible wisdom that needs to be documented. And, uh, and that also needs to be done real fast because we are losing, the, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to arrest the changes that are happening. And I don't know if we should, as long as we're, you know, uh, being reasonable and uh, we, we kind of make a difference in the way they are building. I don't know if we should arrest those changes. Uh, but uh, I think it's important to document those. And so that's the, that's the uh, uh, kind of uh, um, map, uh, route map of the uh, 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 vernacular that I saw. And I'd like to just play this video, please. The next one. It's supposed to have been linked up. Yeah. This is from Bishnupur, uh, again where you were talking, there was this uh, Banalata, uh, there is a, there is a uh, resort that is run like a cooperative, there are 500 women who work there and this Anjali is from there and Anjali uh, interestingly, uh, lives in a mud home and she was proudly telling me that Banalata has uh, mud cottages. So she was saying, why are you not staying here? Mit no, pura, all mud cottages, but air conditioned. So that's when I asked her, do you need it air conditioned? What is your home like? And that was the, um, that was the question, I, the response I got for, for that. And um, so to say that people are moving very fast into building uh, not with the traditional systems and moving into uh, uh, newer systems of construction, but uh, they sometimes don't know why they're doing that as well. They're just following the herd and I think there as well we can play a role. Now I, this is the cross section again of the newer systems of construction and if you were to look at the previous uh, cross section, you could at least probably hazard a guess, yeah, this is from this part of India. Uh, or even world for that matter. Here, I don't think we can uh, really pick and say any of this is from uh, uh, anywhere. It could be. It could be really. And that's something we've always we've been saying this even in our classrooms that you could place this anywhere. But really, I think it's time we do something about it. Uh, uh, at least in terms. Of, so I think uh, the changes you're talking about also. West Bengal and Jharkhand had 
uh, highways, while post Jharkhand UP Madhya Pradesh had expressways. And that caused a huge change in the way, um, uh, uh, in, in the buildscape as well. And uh, I felt that it, it was, there was a huge change in the way people interacted with me. I had people extremely uh, forthcoming, warm, where, you know, the homes were in a particular way with the chabutras outside. And the minute it became a home which was walled and closed, the interactions became a lot lesser. And uh, I, I mean, that, that, that speaks volumes on how design can actually uh, impact, uh, uh, impact how, how we live and what we do. And I think uh, what you said about mud houses and brick houses, my experience, I also travel a lot in that area, of course, in car. And I have tried to interact with these people. They make beautiful mud homes, especially on Bengal, uh, Bihar and Jharkhand border. And there are villages of mud houses very beautifully decorated, they take a lot of pride in what they are doing. But the moment they start making money, they shift to the brick and then RCC and the metal roof. So that's the trend. So that's the difference between kacha and pakka also, I think. And I, I was talking to somebody yesterday as well uh, who, you know, this whole thing of what is kacha and why, kacha means impermanent. So the minute they are building with mud and it has a tag of kacha, they want to move on to something that's more permanent. And uh, 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 you, I think you showed some government buildings uh, built with, uh, uh, as demonstration also, right? And I think if we can get some of our government buildings, and I think we also as architects and uh, scientists can play a role in transforming that kacha into pakka in some way for sure. And if uh, uh, our government buildings, the buildings of the rich can be built in a particular way and we start marketing those so much more. We start showing them to these people, saying there are these, you know, people who are building in this different way. Uh, I think we'll be able to get them to think a little differently as well. Yeah, we have one in Shantini Ketan, right. that mud, you know, house, yeah, something like that. But anyway, very interesting information, Gita, and I think uh, moving towards, you know, like the, like, the conclusion of our talk today, I mean, I would also uh, want to ask you that what is it that you would like to tell us as professionals, what you have seen interacting with people and what is it that we should be doing as a fraternity of designers to, you know, make uh, things more uh, uh, known to the lower strata of the society or, you know, more people, whichever strata of the society. I mean, what is your... Yeah, I think I touched on a lot of things already. One is uh, uh, identify, uh, first, I said, like I said, bridge the gap between the construction worker and us, for sure, because, and also things like, uh, another, I, maybe our friends from Kolkata will be able to uh, tell me, I also heard that there are no women construction workers on sites in Kolkata now. Is that right, Malaida? Yeah, so that's something that kind of alarmed me as well, because I was looking for a woman construction worker to, flag off my, and I'm, so I, I don't know if it's because of COVID, uh, post-COVID, or if it's a general practice, because that also brings some kind of an imbalance, uh, uh, and uh, if women architects are to be respected on site, there need to be women construction workers, and probably being paid on par as men, so those are also things that we as architects should try and influence uh, for sure. Um, I think we need to be free in sharing of our experience and knowledge. I think sometimes you're very closed and we, you know, we may have had a bit of a success in something and we probably cracked something and we like to keep it as a close, closely guarded secret. And I think uh, sharing will only help us grow and that's something uh, I have learned through this walk as well that it's important to share. And um, I, I like uh, organizations like the IIA and uh, Council of Architecture, that is us really, to see what kind of a, a campaign can be had in these locations for our work to be known so much more. I think uh, showcasing, uh, we don't showcase ourselves enough. We are not going there and telling people enough. And uh, uh, I'm not sure what kind of a plan we need to sit and put our heads together to think on how we can help these people who can't afford designers. Uh, while being fair to ourselves also, because I understand that we also have to make a living. So how do we make that happen? Uh, again, I think we need to sit together and put together a plan and I'm sure it's possible for us to uh, make it uh, a win-win for uh, uh, all of us. 
and um, uh, I think uh, 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 I was speaking to Monish, uh, uh, Monish uh, I think at the airport about architectural social responsibility as well and I think if we can look at uh, uh, being certainly responsive and responsible as uh, architects. I was looking at 24th April when I concluded the walk. We all came together, we walked from Rajghar to Red Fort. If we can look at that being uh, architectural social responsibility day and we actually get together and uh, uh, create uh, uh, a whole plan for the next edition, next 24th of April, and we actually, as a community of architects, see how we can do multiple uh, 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 activities across India that can make a difference. Um, uh, 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 we are looking at supporting fellowships and uh, scholarships as well. And uh, if there are any projects in any of the locations that you think deserve uh, uh, design expertise, uh, do let us know. Uh, uh, I'm looking at, uh, uh, you know, crafting them as projects. And any connections with the government, I think we all need to start talking to all the stakeholders. So I think if we have connections, because uh, by ourselves, we, we are not going to be able to achieve so many of the things that we set out to achieve. So how do we all really come together and uh, uh, make some small plans and then all of them start coming together and become that larger plan is what we need to see. And uh, I you know, would love, love to be part of any of that ideation that uh, anybody initiates. Yeah. Superb. So, uh, Gita, I mean, uh, just to uh, wrap up our conversation today, it was uh, very enlightening in terms of knowing the journey that you took, what are the challenges that you fa uh, got in between and how you have accomplished it and what is your learning and I think it's a lot of learning for me personally also because now I realize that it's what you did is the first step. I mean we all have to take it further as a fraternity and that's how I am looking at it. I mean I wanted to be there when you flagged off because there was a discussion in Council of Architecture, I mean I'm part of Manual of Architectural Practice which is coming up. So seven of us were discussing that who will go. And I, unfortunately, I could not be there because I had to attend. You started off, I think, on 11th, right? 13th. 13th. 13th, 13th yeah. 12th, you had a meeting. Yeah, 12th, yeah. And then I had to attend one wedding in Udaipur, so I could not come. But I'm glad I'm here with you today, at least to celebrate your completion of your journey. And I'm sure equally all of them are happy to be here and listening to you in person. We have seen you. Uh, share a lot of things on WhatsApp and Facebook. I think that was another thing that was that was meant to happen. That whole story was not about me, but I think it was about us. And it was important to uh, keep putting up those posts and making that noise on social media so that we all as a community kind of wake up to the issues that I was experiencing along the way as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the cause is larger. It's not individual. It's for all of us. And I think with that spirit, let's hope that we all come together further and join hands to uh, make things really better for our profession. With that, I would like to thank our discussion, I mean, complete our discussion today. Thank you. Thank you, Gita.